Hi, uh, we are on vlog number 96. This is Artcasters. This is the weekly show where we talk about art and we have a rotating third chair. So it's myself, Scott Circland. You want to introduce yourself and tell people where they can find your stuff? Yeah, I got the lower third going on. So that's my info there. But you can find me at circworks.com or if you want to check out some cool mad science supplies, which basically means like posters and prints and stickers and all that stuff. That's at madsciencesupplycompany.com. Nice. And I'm on YouTube. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and you can check out Cirqueworks. Uh, we rotate between Scott and myself's channel, and then we have a special guest uh, actually staying with me, and uh, that is Mr. Kevin Cross. Where can people find you, sir? Hey, everybody. You can currently find me in the Los Angeles County area. Uh, for the next two weeks, and after that, you can find me in Portland, Oregon, until I return back down south, a thousand miles. Um, if you go to your local record store, look in the independently produced record section, you might find some of my albums there. You can find me there. Sometimes it, I might just be browsing. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. But if you want to <laughs> go watch my YouTube videos, you can go to uh, youtubecom slash art or youtubecom slash Monkey Mod Comics, I think. They both go to the same place. Nice. And that's a YouTube.com. <laughs> you know, when, you, when you said the record store, I thought you meant go find some of your records, but you were just talking about I'd go there and you'd probably find you browsing. Well, no, I was, I was, I'm not going to explain the joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go with that. I like it. All right. So, um, guys. how's it going? Yeah, yeah. How has it been, Kevin? How are you doing? Well, you know, been in Portland, and uh, now I'm here, and I'm, uh, I love it here. You know, the plan is eventually to, to become a full-time resident down here. So, you know, got all my, my best dudes are down here. So, you know, I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> That's good. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, like we we've been just like super busy in the last like few days, just kind of um, having way too late of nights and then work days as well. So, it, if we're a little off on this one, that's uh, it's because we've been been up late. So, I already hedged our bets. So, if this is a shitty episode, forgive us. <laughs> um, um, okay, let's talk about band stuff for a second. Here. Let's do it. Let's do first it. Rule. Let's talk bands. First, first rule. If you mess up on stage, you never let the crowd know. You never say, hey, we haven't practiced for a couple weeks. You never do that. What you do is you say this. Let's do this. <laughs> if we screw up, I mean, no, wait, hold on. Let me start over. We're fucking awesome. Thanks for showing up. You guys are fucking awesome, too. Um, go. Yeah. That sounds good. Like, you can also just say, like, are you ready to rock? And just kind of bring that. That's always a good one. Um, Do your so, best Paul Stanley impersonation. That's always a good way to get yeah. the crowd going. I got That's the good. rock and roll pneumonia. <laughs> 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 oh, man. So what are you working on, Scott? Uh, same thing. Uh, I guess I could screen share. It's the same thing I've been working on for the past, what, how many weeks? My... Uh, my little avatar set here, so I'll switch it over, yeah. Nice. Just shading in some robots. I've got most of the, so basically what it, what's going on here, I've got these guys, I've got a, like a cosplay set, so you'll be able to make your own little cosplay avatar and add little things, so I've shaded all those, just one, it's just it's like a monotone right now, but then once it's all done, I can go in and I can add all these different colors. So you'll have different color choices and stuff. And then I've got a robot set and an alien set and a zombie set. So once these are all done, then I'm going to upload them. I'm going to do a bunch of different things with them. I'm going to upload them to Creative Market where people can, you know, purchase them to use however they want. Uh, I'll probably make different sets that I'll give away for free if you join like a mailing list, all that kind of stuff. So it's hopefully it's going to have multiple uses. So all this time that I'm working on on this thing will eventually hopefully pay off if I'm lucky. We'll see. I have a question. Do you have? Yes. Are you going to be working on one that will make me look more handsome? <laughs> if handsome means you want devil horns and elf ears, yes. Oh, cool. That's all I want to know. Thank you. 
We can give you an afro. We can give you like a page boy haircut. We can give you a Bride of Frankenstein haircut, a Princess Leah haircut, whatever you want. Well, as an artist, I have been thinking about maybe I'll get the afro because I've been thinking about changing my name to Bob Cross. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, you have to do your best Kenny Vloggins impersonation. Oh, he's inside of me all the time. <laughs> Here to share his vision with the world. Everybody who's watching is like, who's that? <laughs> These are all inside jokes today. That's true, that's true. <laughs> Kenny Vloggins is the, uh, the conscience of vlogging. He yeah. is the, he's the godfather of vlogging. He's probably the most notorious vlogger he, he actually that ever was. He actually created vlogging. Um, and it was like everything good. It was a complete accident. Um, because he just wanted to share his vision with you all, with the world. You should share too. Uh, so I hope that inspired you guys. I haven't slept much. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we, I hope we channeled Kenny Vloggins. I hope everybody's inspired to share their vision with the world. Yeah. Kenny is um, a, a I'm match. Sorry about what I'm doing to your ratings, guys. <laughs> Oh man. Um, so, uh, yeah, our, our, yeah, I think we got a call from like our TV listing and they, they aren't happy with our ratings right now because we, we get so many views, but, uh, um, so yeah, so like I'm working on uh, layout. So that's why I'm kind of going to be zoning in and out during this because a lot of typing and all that kind of multitasky stuff. Um, and then Kevin, you're uh, sketchbooking, right? Yes. Rockin' the sketchbook. sketchbook. How, how is the sketchbooking going other than the fact that, I, I mean, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about your recent sort of surge on YouTube. Because I'm very curious <laughs> if that was accidental or if that was planned or what. No, it was completely masterminded. Uh, and stick around, everybody, to the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah. That's the secret answer for you all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I mean those sketch those I can see why those sketchbook videos caught on. Um, I mean, I would like actually like to hear your perspective of that, but we'll get to that in a little about bit. About what in particular? Um, well, yeah, I'd actually like to hear what what, what you think, um, because to be quite honest, I don't I don't really know. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't say that because I'm trying to mine you for information. <laughs> well, I know you, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it, it seems like that's... I was like, I know what Scott's going to ask tonight. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it seems like that's the way it, it, it always goes. But I, th I think all you can do is kind of what I think you and I have both been doing is just, you know, constantly putting out stuff and keep putting out stuff and eventually something will catch, you know. I mean, I think there's there's things you can do to up your chances and everything, but... But I think in the end, it's just kind of, you know, it, it's, I don't know what it is. It's, I think um, it's a, yeah, I mean, I, I have some maybe like, you know, hypotheses, some theories maybe. <laughs> but it's it's still like, you know, within this first month of like, like what, have, what the hell's going on? So if, you didn't, if you didn't, you know, sort of, I, I, I'm not, when I say plan, I mean, obviously you don't plan for that. But, but there's certain things you can do that you may, you know, like I said, up your chances, but I was curious if afterwards, if you did any research to find out kind of what happened, if it was shared by some somebody with like a major following, or if there is okay. any way to kind of gauge that. Kevin, okay. tell him about the YouTube God that <laughs> oh. handed you the YouTube card. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here he comes. Ah, okay. <laughs> no. it's, um, it's been Kenny Vloggins this whole time, you guys. That's yeah. the trick. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to pull my face off. It's some, like, weird little fat guy. Um, so, uh, um, so back to what you were saying, Scott. So I, I took, like, a month to put up a new video or three weeks or something like that, and I didn't intend to. And I was like, holy shit, I need to put up a video, you know? And... Um, and I kind of kind of missed it, and it was it was just like kind of in a sense like a hundred days making comics where you know I was doing a lot of stuff, getting really busy, and not kind of doing the things I want to do, you know, um, or, or uh, progressing the way I want to go, you know, and and I said in a video um, maybe it was a week ago or so 
where, you know, I think maybe I said it in another one of those sketchbook videos too, but I was kind of like of this mindset at one point where, you know, I'm now a professional illustrator, you know, going back years. I'm now a professional illustrator. And if I'm going to draw anything, it's, it's going to be for money. You know, um, this is now my job, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it, it was, it was not a smart way to think. Um, because, you know, here I am now and I find that my skill level or my progression in my skill level has slowed way down. And there's a correlation with that. You know, I mean, there's other factors, but let's be honest, you know, you're in control of your own destiny. Um, and there's other factors in that where um, the illustration career has also not progressed as much as it, it probably should have, you know. And a lot of that is, you know, laziness for not drawing in a sketchbook because, you know, this is where, you know, you get all your good ideas and you get your bad ones out and you, um, you get better. And the better you get at art, the, the more your stock goes up, you know. And this is what I care about doing. This is what I care about. So, um, you know, why I quit, I don't think it's a good reason why I did it, but that was my reason. Um, it's a, you know, when I think about it, it's a little egotistical <laughs> going back thinking about it. But, um, anyway, so, um, there, there was another time I did a video just went up, I guess, yesterday morning where I had kind of come to this conclusion that I, that I am now that I'm at right now, um, with not as much enthusiasm as I have now about it and tried to start a sketchbook where I was like, I need to, but that was also the time when hundred days of making comics were started. And I was already trying to shoehorn in something else. And I remember, um, you know, roughly the timeline, 100 days started. And um, I think I had finished writing. And so I started drawing. And I had been drawing in a way different style for kids' books than I had been for comic books. And, um, and oh, man, it was just not, you know, it was so laborious. To draw things that used to be easy, you know. And uh, hey, Jim Lujan's on the way to Vegas. Well, we won't <laughs> tell anybody. Have fun, dude. Um, so, and anyway, so, um, you know, then the past few years, a couple years or whatever, you know, there's been 100 Days of Making Comics, and I do that and do some client work here and there, come down here, you know, go through a divorce, you know, a lot, a lot of heavy stuff, right? And, um, and so, so now things are starting to even out a bit, you know, my, my, you know, newer, newer life or whatever chapter is in its beginning. And, and, um, and so I'm working on my comics and, uh, I'd kind of taken a break from penciling the comic, you know, I'd done some penciling for some freelance gigs and stuff like that, of course, but, um, wasn't really penciling the comics. I was doing a lot of inking, a lot of coloring of pages, and I'm getting back to, you know, I've got the, the last few pages to pencil, and, uh, and it was like laborious again, and I was just like, and I was looking at this sketchbook that I've had for years, which has, you know, been, been the star of the videos lately, and, um, and it was in uh, cellophane. A friend of mine gave it to me. He used to work at Lucasfilm. A lot of people ask me why does it say Lucasfilm on it. That's why, because he worked there. Oh, I thought there was a sticker, but it's it's like printed on there. Then. Yeah, it's embossed. I don't know if you can oh. see. It's like got a silver kind of sheen to it. Yeah, it's like metallic paint in there. But anyway, so he gave it to me, and I, I just had it forever, you know. And it's pretty funny, like having those videos go like insanely bigger than I've ever had any videos go. Um, and unexpected too, but so many people ask where they where I got it, and it's just old. I don't. Even, they probably don't even offer this anymore, um, anywhere. But so I've had it forever, and and uh, I just got kind of like um, I don't know, like upset with myself or something. <laughs> you know, I was like, um, you know getting over this divorce thing, starting to date again. And, um, this girl that I'm hanging out with now is really awesome. She's, she also does art and everything. And so, you know, we're, we're poor. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I was like, I need, I need a good date. 
I need to be like a rad dude who's like spontaneous and can have fun without money no matter where he goes. And I look, you know, and also I was like, and I want to draw my sketchbook tonight and hang out with this girl. So I was like, hey, let's go to Pal's Books in the cafe there and let's draw on our sketchbooks. And she was like, oh, that's great. I, she's probably watching right now going, you're such an asshole. But um, <laughs> and so, so I drew this page. This is the first page I drew. And I was like, nice. you know what? This was for nothing. You know, this is for myself. I shouldn't say nothing. This was for the joy of it. This is for practice. This is, this is even, it says Lucasfilm on the front. They're just so happen to be this kind of weird George Lucasy looking guy sitting across from me. So I drew him. Yeah, um, I see that guy at the comic store by my house. All the time. Yeah, I, I think he has a <laughs> dual citizenship. But so, um, <laughs> so anyway, so I did that. And then <clears throat> shortly after, you know, I was like, uh, I was in between work. I just finished a job for a client and um, we had planned to spend the day together and I had not gotten paid yet. And, um, you know, dealing with divorce lawyers and stuff is very expensive. So, um, so I was like, you know what? <laughs> my first idea, <laughs> this is, this is silly. My first idea was, you know what I want to do? I want to drive around Portland all day and fill this. Mm, yeah. The whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it just turned into like, I was like, well, you know, if I want to draw really, really fast and not care about what's in it, um, then I could possibly maybe, maybe get, get somewhere close or halfway at least. But, but I was just having fun with it. So I just turned it into like, it's just a day of sketching. And so we did go around town, you know, and we got hungry for lunch and went to a deli and we drew there and, you know, we went to the mall, you know, draw, you know, stuff like that. And, um, and so then I realized as I'm going through the sketchbook, you know, I, I had lost kind of the joy of drawing. Even drawing Monkey Mod got to the point where this is taking a long time. And um, sure, I've got like life things going on that I could blame it on, but it's taking a long time. So saying that to myself, set myself up to not enjoy it as much, you know, and that's kind of why I switched to inking and coloring because that was when I was just drawing it for joy. I'm, I'm, I was finishing the pages I was drawing for joy and I wanted to get back to that. And so now I'm drawing for joy again. And, um, and you know, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, like monkey mods showing up in my sketchbook again, you know, things like that. So, so, um, you know, there's just so many benefits of sketchbooking that I just, I don't know, too egotistical. I'm a professional illustrator. I don't need practice anymore. You know, something yeah. stupid, just, just an egotistical reason. And, um, so, so anyway, so I just, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of picked it up to, to kind of get back into drawing and to feel comfortable. Cause you know, I used to, when you draw a lot, you get this like kind of visual language and you, you know, you draw a lot of poses, you draw a lot of things you wouldn't normally do it, draw, you know, like, like if I'm going to draw for myself most of the time, it, or I should say like when I was younger, when I wasn't trying to really practice or something like that, it's it was zombies and monsters. That's it. Zombies and monsters, you know, but now I'm just like, just drawing what I see everywhere. Just, you know, sometimes caricaturing it, sometimes trying to be realistic just for the fun of it. And, just to try to get that um, that kind of like muscle memory and visual language back so that when I go to a monkey mod page, I just like, I don't spend like four hours on on a thumbnail, you know, yeah. or, or like trying to pencil a, you know, a page or something like that. Four hours penciling a page, that's short. But, you know, I would, for monkey mod, it's more cartoony than some of the stuff I've done. So I could feasibly pencil a page in four hours. So I want to do that. And instead of like, you know, oh, this hand pose, and I get mad at myself. Why can't you draw this hand pose? You used to be able to draw this hand pose. Well, it's because I haven't been drawing that hand pose. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, you know, so that leads to uh, doing things like, um, sorry, I'm not trying to make this a sketchbook tour, but, you know, then you start just drawing pages of hands, you know, things like that, you know, and, uh, and then start, like, like, you know, it starts off, I'm like, okay, this is a hand pose I know how to draw. It looks terrible. And then by the end, I'm like, oh, yeah, those are my, those are my old, you know, tricks and, and stuff. So, so yeah, that's why I got back into sketchbooking in a big way. And it was kind of like a zeitgeist moment, you know, that I think I was sharing with Brandon Dayton. Um, if any of you guys follow him, you should uh, go to his channel for sure. Um, subscribe. He's a good dude. Not just the fact that he's got, you know, awesome videos. He's, he's a rad guy. So, um, yeah. And so he, he did a video 
that posted before one of mine and and I was kind of like, oh man, it is like the zeitgeist because he said something like he had he had a stack of old sketchbooks that he had burned through and like, I can't remember what the timeline was, but you know, we'll say two years. And then he had like one sketchbook that took him like, you know, twice that time. And yeah. he was like, and he was talking about, yeah, my progress, it just stalled, you know, slowed, stalled a lot and everything. And I, you know, was feeling that too. And yeah, so we kind of messaged each other about that kind of stuff. But, um, so yeah, so this is this is um, you know if anybody watches my channel and watched all that you know the life crap that I went through and you know trying to become a self help book a walking Tony Robbins seminar um, you know this is like an extension of that you know getting better being a better version of yourself every day you know especially if you're an artist drawing your sketchbook every day at least you know, at least something you know yeah so and it's not it's not all going to be good I mean most of the sketchbook I'm looking at it and the I'm like, yeah, there might be one good thing, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's going to make my comics better. It's going to make my illustration better, and and by golly, I'm hoping it will make people like me. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've always kind of done sketches here and there. Are you guys here in the front? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why that is because I've got my headphones on. Yeah, I got mine on too. I don't know. Yeah, mine are on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try to talk. Okay, I'm not hearing it now. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> All right, so I was going to say, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've always kind of done sketches, but just on loose sheets of paper, but I think the sketchbook is, you know, I think it's sort of a world of difference because I just recently started doing it. I'm not so on top of it. I actually worked on it a little bit today, but it's not like every day, which I need to, you know, work my way up to. But I'm still finding myself in that trap where, not that I'm trying to get it to be perfect, but I usually like I'll start with something and I'll noodle around with it until it's something finished. Just like usually like one page has a single drawing on it. And I've done a few things here and there that just me messing around, just, you know, trying to get the flow going and everything. But then I look at it and I'm like, oh, I don't really like that. So it's like I've got to kind of get my head out of that space and, and you know, just realize that this is just and I, you know, I, I said all this in a video I did. But it's still saying it and actually doing it are two different things. So um, I'm trying to do that as you know as well. But you you also touched on you're you're, you're kind of I, I find myself in the same place where it's not that I mean it seems like I'm drawing all the time just because of the nature of my job and everything. But I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm not. I'm just doing the same stuff over and over. It's kind of rote. I'm not, I'm yeah. not like learning new things. I'm not yeah. stretching out because I've got to a point where, yeah, I can draw certain things and, you know, I have to draw certain things and I have so much time to draw these things. So that, you know, either for work or whatever, or my comic. So it seems like I'm always drawing, but I'm not, putting aside extra time to learn new things. It's just basically the stuff that I'm already sort of good at. So, yeah. I mean, that's something I really, you know, but, you know, again, it's just finding time. But it, Yeah, like for me, I used to um, keep a, a really, like, constant sketchbook. Like, I used to do these crazy um, days where I would just get on a bus and I would bring a sketchbook and I would just fill pages and I'd just overlap all the drawings, like not, you know, single out one, just kind of make a web of drawings. And uh, just, you know, use like a toning marker or something and just try to capture people who like jogged by, like, you know, in two seconds and try to capture them in a gesture and see somebody with like a weird kind of neck or something and try to draw it. And, um, Excuse me, I sorry, to must draw your neck. Yeah, I used to do it all the time, and and it's fascinating because you know, like um, at the time I was like living in Long Beach, so I used to bus everywhere, and you just see the most interesting kind of weird characters on the bus, and uh, and it's a perfect opportunity to just sketch people, and so like I I don't know when I fell out of practice, but when you were talking about having that mentality of like I'm a professional illustrator now. I don't like draw for not like unless I'm getting paid, I'm not going to draw. Yeah, um, I had that too, totally. And I don't know when it happened. 
Some of that was also, and I wonder if this is the same for you, it's like, um, it was a little bit of fear. Also, yeah. not just ego, you know, now I'm thinking about it. It wasn't just all ego. It was also a little bit of fear like, okay, I need to be, I, you know, I don't know when my next client's coming or something like that. So I need to like, you know, make, you know, make a t-shirt, make a, make a print, make a something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is, I think that's the tough thing because when you're, especially when you're first starting out with freelance, which, uh, you know, Kevin and I have both been in that position. It's like you the floor could drop out at any moment and you're not used to that feeling yet, you know? And so there, there is that constant, like you, you wrap up a gig and you're looking for the next. And yeah, especially because it's not the floor could drop out, the floor will drop out. Exactly. And it will drop out a few times, yeah. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted. No, it's, I mean, like, that's part of the nature of the business. It's like feast and famine. So it's, it, it's like you, you get so used to occasional famines that you start building. It's like you, instead of taking time to kind of, like, maybe prepare your food and enjoy it, you're just, like, stocking up the storeroom because you're like <laughs> you know the famine's coming you know yeah and and um it does create this mentality of like art art, art for utility rather than art for like exploration and growth and um and it does you're right it stifles like it's funny i haven't kept up with my sketchbook for the last few years and um i mean I, i'll hit it here and there you know but it's like right. Um, it, I, I can see where like that does like cut down those moments of like, Hey, I drew that arm off and you have to redraw it 50 times and you're like, what the hell's wrong with me? I used to be able to do this, you know? Yeah. And it, it makes sense. Cause it's, it's, if I think of it, it's almost like if you were to be a professional boxer, but you never hit the gym, <laughs> you know, like, um, that wouldn't work out too well, you know? Cause it's like, you have to do all the warm up to like actually, you know, improve or get better. So that's, that's a trip. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's also a thing that, you know, it's, I don't know, this is going to sound a little woo woo, but you know, I got a beard now, so I'm working on becoming a wizard. Um, it's, it's like when you're in that kind of like fear state of, I, I need to draw for money right now. Um, I, I think it's some, like some way, I think that never works. And it's always yeah. when, when you do something for, for joy and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I just made a thousand million dollars right now. And I just, whoa, you know, but this other thing I really tried hard on, eh, you know, kind of yeah. like a lead balloon. So I don't know. sounds a little mystical, but. No, I, I think you're right. Cause um, like I, I remember um, the first time I tried to do a t-shirt, like when I was doing all the t-shirt competitions and stuff and I had a few wins, I was like, okay, I figured out the formula. And so I'd like make a t-shirt that I knew would sell really well. And then it wouldn't sell at all. <laughs> like nobody would like it. Um, but if I was like, Hey, that's a funny idea. I want to do it, you know, just out of the want to do it. Yeah. And those usually were the ones that sold. It's, it's so weird. Um, cause people can usually tell if you're being authentic or not. So it's like, but, but yeah, it's, it's interesting that I've justified not working on my sketchbook. It's just from this conversation. It's interesting. Cause it's like, I totally, um, and, and then like, it's not like I use that justification to not do my sketchbook now. It's just, I, you, you build habits and then you can unlearn habits too. Yep. And I think I just fell out of the habit and I've just kind of forgotten about it. Yeah. And anytime I pick it up, I'm like, I got to remember this. It's really fun too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. Cause like, like, you know, I'm drawing something, it's not coming out perfect or anything like that, but, um, it's eventually like, that just means the next thing I put out that's for the public or something like that is going to be way better, you know? Yeah. And so if you just think like, this is making me better, even if you're drawing like, you know, the hand I showed that's all, you know? So, yeah, but it, I, I, I totally know what you're saying because, like, you know, it is a habit that I had and I just, so I'm trying to get it back. Um, and that's mm -hmm. kind of going back to what Scott was saying, like, like why, like, I have no idea, really. I have, I have assumptions of why 
um, a month ago, two sketchbook videos I did did better than anything I've done in in my life. No, um, that I've done in a long time. And part of that is because I was just like, man, I just really want to fill up a sketchbook. And I have an art channel. I'm an artist with a YouTube channel. So follow me as I fill up a sketchbook. It was not like, hmm, sketchbook videos are hot right now. Because if I said that, those videos probably would have tanked, you know? Um, so, you know, you gotta, I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just saying you got to come at this stuff with, you know, with no expectations other than making yourself better and, and enjoy yourself, you know? Yeah, it seems there's, you know, because I listen to a lot of the, you know, YouTube gurus and stuff, and I, I do all that, you know, basically everything they tell you to do, um, but that can only get you so far. It's also, I, I, I think, season to taste. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. what works for one person doesn't work for the other. Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things they say is, like, uh, the latest thing I've been listening to, like, Roberta Blake, he's saying, uh, you know, you got to put out... Today's age, you got to put out like three videos a week. So I don't quite put out three unless unless the archivists are on my channel, then maybe three. But um, but yeah. So you know, I put I put out videos constantly. But like I know you were kind of like on a hiatus and you hadn't put anything out for a while, and then you released that one video and it just skyrocketed. So that <laughs> leads me to think, well, that just blows that other theory out of the water. So That's, yeah, because I. <laughs> I used to listen to Roberto Blake, and now I hear, I, I see these these uh, YouTube, you know, and it's not saying that they have bad information or you shouldn't listen to them. I just think you should take what they say with a grain of salt. They got in the door a different way. Yeah, and I think everyone, I think everyone does. But I mean, I'm wondering if that if there's something to that. Maybe maybe it was just the fact that. Well, I don't know if that. I was going to say maybe it's the fact that you hadn't posted anything in a while and people were clamoring for your stuff, but that doesn't take into account all the new followers and stuff you gained that had no idea who you were in the first place. Yeah, and, and so, you know, I've got the Creator Studio app on my phone and everything, and it's definitely people are not clamoring for my stuff um, because you can well, see. What is that? What's the Creator Studio app? Oh, you, is that? It's an app that, that it's, it's your analytics in your pocket. <laughs> okay, okay. Is that? Is that set like a third party thing from YouTube or is that part of it's from YouTube? It's a, it's a, it's a creator studio app. Okay. Right. I'll have to check that. I mean, it's, I, I use, I don't usually don't use the mobile to do any of my video stuff. So I probably have all that stuff just on desktop. I'm guessing because I have all that information. It's got the YouTube play button with a gear around it. That's, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's the same thing that's on the desktop. That, okay. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, when I looked at it, it's like, um, for the, those two weeks, those two first videos, um, I could see that 12% of my subscribers <laughs> watched. So the rest came from other places. Right. So, you know, and I don't think people were clamoring for me to do another video. It just some, you know, there's, there's, um, there's a couple things I did differently. Um, you know, cause I've been thinking how my, YouTube channel, it seems like such a, you know, cluster F. I don't know who's watching. I guess it's late. It's late night. Late night arcast. It's a cluster fuck. It's a cluster fuck. So, um, I've never had a no cussing rule in this thing, so I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so, um, well, I also started noticing that, like, uh, there's some of my videos um, now, there's like younger people watching them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, eh. And then, Recently, someone goes, I'm going to play this in my, I, I, teach, I teach high school or something. I'm going to play this. In. So I'm like, uh, I better, better chill a little bit on that. But anyway, um, where was I going with this? Oh, so, you know, I told myself a, a little while ago, like, um, you know, and I think we even talked about this, Scott, you know, months ago, where it was kind of like, well, I want to go and redo some thumbnails to make everything have more of a cohesive look and feel and, you know, and right now my YouTube channel is a mess. You know, it's got like thumbnails where back when I totally didn't know what I was doing and I just let YouTube pick the the, the still. So there's times where it's just my face going, eh. you know. So they always pick the worst, <laughs> the worst frame. 
it's hard when you've got all of those videos to go back and fix them all. I mean, I think I, I think I did that with my because I started doing thumbnails. I think after my first 100 days of main comics, but just going back and making thumbnails for that first round. And I don't know what it did. I, I, I mean, I, I'm sure it helped a little. I mean, I had some videos on there that were doing doing all right. Well, but. you know, in, in a way, I kind of think that it's I'm doing I'm doing it for myself. If I did, yeah. it, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. Um, I've tried to start and I thought about it and then I'm like, you know what? I This time is better probably just spent with the new video. Um, and so I just decided, you know, that right there, I was like, here's my like soft reboot of the channel. So I picked, you know, two fonts and I picked kind of like, um, started doing thumbnails that weren't stills of the video, you know? Um, and like you know making that part of the process is like here's the thumbnail whereas before i would just scrub through the video and be like that's good enough click you know screenshot throw up, you know stuff like that and i decided i wanted to make it just just look better so that's that's a minor change um and it started with that um there's uh yep evan knows it gil sands and uh i'll give you uh i'll give you the the no prize if you can guess what the other phone is but um and then uh what else? Uh, I started um, paying more attention to if you go on to Google and then Google, quote unquote, Google search terms. And um, I can actually tell you what the site is so you don't have to do that. Hold on. Um, but if you do that, Google has a site that you can match search terms against each other. So when you're wanting to name your video, like, for example, sketchbook tour versus sketchbook walkthrough. Both of those are, are fairly popular search terms, but tour was bigger, so I went tour. But then in the description, I wrote a walkthrough tour uh, because it also pulls keywords out of your description. So I started paying more attention to that because in 2017, they changed apparently, um, because I watched some of those channels you're talking about too, um, where they talk about, well, the analytics are, are different and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I just kind of like, well, I want, as many people to see this as possible. And um, so, you know, I just was like, okay, I'm going to be more, more careful. And by that, I don't mean spend all day coming up with tags or anything like that, but I'm going to, you know, be a little bit more cognizant or um, more careful of like, what, what would I search for? And then I look at the Google search terms and, you know, kind of stuff like that. And it, it sounds like it's a big process, but it doesn't take very long. Um, and uh, what else? Um, naming the video is much more generic, whereas before in the past, you know, like on 100 Days of Making Comics and stuff, I might be like, a day at Disneyland, <laughs> you know? And um, that's not gonna get like, that, that doesn't say, hey, this guy makes comics. This, hey, this is, you know, because, you know, I was, I was like, well, it's 100 Days of Making Comics, they'll see that it's 100 Days of Making Comics, you know? And, and pl plus it's a daily blog, so it's a little bit different, but, but for the long term, that video is probably gonna go away. You know what I'm saying? As far and um, and I have done so much sharing of my life, and I I don't want to for a while. So um, other than you know like hey sketchbooking is fun, I think it's really awesome. You should do it too. Follow follow me on my journey. You know, um, so so those are some changes. You know, kind of trying or, or thinking about more evergreen stuff. Thinking about search terms. Um, thinking about what you name your video and then whatever you want to name your video something that's like what it is exactly you don't get cute or clever you know and then you and then you kind of repeat that in the description and then you kind of repeat that in the tags and you know and then you kind of throw it out there and hope that something happens um, now when I put that that one a sketchbook day or day sketch I can't remember a sketchbook day I think yeah so um is it Google Trends? Google.com slash trends. That's the search term site. Um, so anyway, you know, I previous to that I was getting like a good video might get five five hundred to really good seven hundred after seven days, seven whole days. That's like that's a good video. But it was typically around like 350 to 380. And so then I put up a video and 
um, you know, the subscribers going up very slowly, and then and then I could see like people unsubscribing, and you know, it was it was it was changing so much that I could tell. <laughs> you know, after three days, I'd be like, I got two subscribers. You know, something like that. Yeah, that's then, where I'm at. I'm at. Yeah. And then and then uh, so I put the sketchbook day one up, and in the first day, it got what I usually get got in a week, you know, and I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. And then I looked at the analytics and the second day, it just fell like a lead balloon until the second half of the day. Oh, and really? Then, that's weird. And, and then all of a sudden, I know it's, see, this is also, I don't know what to attribute it to. Um, and then all of a sudden it went like straight up to 3000 views. And I was like, holy sh what the, whoa, this is crazy, you know? And then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up and there's like, like 10,000 views. I'm like, what's going on? You know? And, and then it just kept going up and up and up and up. And, um, I have now, like, it took me two and a half years to get to, or maybe even three to get to 5,000 subscribers. And then in the last month I have 15,000 something, you know, and it's just based on these two videos really. And I don't really know why. Cause I can tell you my, ch those changes I did, which are very, very minor. And then um, there's, there's a, like, I kind of changed a little bit. I don't even know if it's very noticeable um, that the way that I, I'm editing the videos. Um, it looks better and it's actually easier for me to do. And it's just a, tr it's just a transition, a way I've been transitioning. Where as before, I would put, I would do a clip that would go into another clip, that would go into another clip, that would go into another clip. And now what I'll do is I'll take a bit of the clip, you know, like say I want to go from clip one to clip two, I'll take a bit of clip one, uh, mostly like usually the audio and the, the audio will trail off and it's, it's a film trick. I was watching, um, watching, just paying attention to filmmakers do this and movies and stuff, but like the audio from one clip, um, goes into the, cl the second clip. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the transition or vice versa where, you know, the audio from second clip is already starting before the first clip is gone away. And, you know, I, I just started noticing it and I really thought that was slick and that's the only editing. So I don't think people are coming to me going like, wow, his editing has gotten really slick because I'm still doing it on my phone. You know, it's not, not anything too fancy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've been accused with some people we know in the community of like keeping a secret, you know, of like, um, keeping a secret. Yeah. Like, how did you do it? You know, how did this oh. happen? We know you, and I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I don't really, think there's a secret or else everyone would be doing it. <laughs> I know. I was like, I really don't know. And you know, I got, come on, you know, tell people, come on, just, just tell me what you did. And I'm like, and so I'm almost have the script that I'm telling you cause I've had to repeat it so many times what I've done oh. differently. And it, it's, it's, when you pull back, that's not enough to go from, you know, an average of, you know, five to 700 a week to 3000 in less than 48 hours, you know, to, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, and, but then again, this was on two videos and here's the other weird thing is, so that first video, the sketchbook day, just, you know, if you look at the analytics over the past three months, it's like this line that's kind of squiggly and then this like spike <laughs> that goes straight up into the air, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so then the next video I did, um, because, you know, throughout doing years of doing a couple years of doing YouTube, I've gotten, there's common questions that come up all the time. What kind of pencil do you use? You know, cause you know, Josh and I have joked about this. We're like, I use a magic wand, you know, cause <laughs> yeah. like the well, pencil that, that's everyone's question. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. pencil, the pencil doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, Evan's onto something here actually. So he, well, he's posting on YouTube. So the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> I, I do have a beard. I do have a beard of secrets. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so, uh, where's I going with this? So, um, that video obviously did way better, way like, like I was looking at the analytics and it's like, um, you are, you know, a million percent better than you were last week, you know, as far as YouTube is concerned. And then, so I did the next video 
to answer those questions. What kind of pencil do you use? Like, I, and, you know, I've said time and time again, but you know, only people who have followed me for a long time are going to know. Like, I use mechanical pencils. I got a, a Walgreens, and why is there color lead in it? Because I went to the art store to get it. That's it. You know, there's no secret. There's no magic to that. And um, wait, Kevin. Is that yeah. colored lead gonna make me viral on YouTube? <laughs> um, no, actually, it's not. So, um, so anyway, so so that that was my decision to do the second video, um, because you know I get, you know, like you're saying, Scott, we we get asked all the, all the time. You know, if someone likes what you're doing and they don't use that, you know, tool you use or whatever, they want to know what it is. It's totally understandable. And but the same questions keep. They're reoccurring all the time, and I type the same thing all the time. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show what I, you know, what these people are asking on because it's based on the sketchbook video. So I'm gonna show what I've got. You know, here's here's the thing I keep all my sketches in. Right. I don't know if this is showing up because. Let you know, me. You, can you, I break in real quick? No. Okay. No, go uh, ahead. I'll, no, if you want to finish, and then I'll come back. Um, <clears throat> so um, my OT levels. Um, <laughs> I keep getting distracted by the comp. The yeah, Jim is being hilarious so, in the chat. So, well, Evan was pre Evan's doing Evan's yeah. doing a pretty good Evan's job. There. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, so I did the sketchbook. You know, what's what do I carry in my sketchbook, quote unquote, toolkit? And that video, um, it it in one week, it only did half. The amount of views I had on the sketchbook day video, mm -hmm. and then it took off the second week, and now it has more views than that first first video by a, a pretty good amount, and um, and now uh, now it's falling back down, like I'm getting a steady decline back down, but it seems like the new base level is higher than I was by a good yeah. amount, by a good amount, but not like because that was nuts. I mean, that, that was that was ridiculous. I mean, I'm very grateful for it, but it was like, what is going on? You know? Well, yeah, it's interesting because it, it, it and I've, I've kind of, I've only seen this kind of happen twice. And like, so I was, you know, I had followed Holly Brown and she had the same thing and it was the same, it was two videos, one after the other, I think, if I'm correct, that just went crazy. I mean, like bigger than yours, crazy, and you know, and she had she had a pretty decent following. I think she had like ten thousand when when everything hit. But it was two videos. It was one, and she didn't have any explanation for it either. And then the yeah. next one after that was the same thing. But it was like so, two videos. You know, I mean, instantly, like that first one. Um, you know, I'm friends with Will Terrell, and he, you know, that sounds like name dropping. Because he's got a big, he's popular in the art, you know, the illustrator, cartoonist, art community, right? He's got, you know, 200,000 or something like that. Um, so, and he's mentioned me on some of his videos before, and I've gotten that, I've gotten some, some spikes from that. And so, but he has not been doing videos for a little bit, but still, that second day when it hit 3,000, um, I, I was like, this is nuts. And I called him. And I was like, Will, what did you do? <laughs> Put out another video. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, but he didn't do anything, you know? And then um, uh, Josh and I went out last night with some friends, and one of them, uh, uh, oh, what was his channel? It's Doog Tunes, D-O-O-G-T-O-O-N-S. Um, and so we're talking, and he's got 82,000 subscribers, and so... You know, he was kind of giving me some tips and stuff and, and everything. And, and you know, he he kind of was like, well, you know, what this looks like, looking at your analytics, is, um, you know, in the whole YouTube sphere, you know, when people are popular, the term is influencers, right? Mm -hmm. so, so he goes, um, it looks like there's some influencer found you and liked your videos. Yeah. And... And and that could be it. That and that person shared two of them, maybe. And maybe that's why, you know. But mm -hmm. it's someone I don't know, right? Because you know. So, but 
but uh, but yeah, I really have no explanation because you know it's it's like the the rate of growth is falling back down to to probably I mean better than before, but probably something more more of a normal more of a norm than being astronomical. What's what's interesting to me though, like with I mean, th this goes back to the tool thing too. Like it's it's good to like. Like I remember finding out like what a series seven was and that was really important for me. Like there was a yes. point in my life where I didn't know, I saw an instructor using it, they clued me in and it kind of opened the doors to like a whole new world until I found like brush pens and stuff. Cause they, the brush pens back then were terrible. Yeah. Um, and like, but there is like this weird, there, so there's a good side, which is like you want to find out the tools or like, you know, with like a, a YouTube video that's successful, you want to find out like what's the what what's the right thing to do or like you're dipping into, you know, getting professional work. You want to know like the right steps to make. There's like a healthy side and then there's like a side that kind of disqualifies the work. So it's like because a lot of the time, like if you see like I've seen guys like that you know, with like a black marker can draw better than somebody with every right tool in the world. You know, just like a big, thick, you know, magic marker. And I mean, uh, you know, so like, I guess what I'm getting at is like, um, we, we shouldn't discount the fact that you actually make pretty good videos. <laughs> like, well, you, know, you, that, but... you take time to edit, like, um, you know, and you've been at it for a while. So it's like, it's not like it's, it's like this magic thing that just boom happened. Yeah. It's like you've been putting in the work and then when the thing arrived, you had the work to kind of have that moment, you know, and hopefully yeah. you repeat it. So the, yeah, just to, to, I don't know, uh, throw a, throw a feather in that cap. Um, I had just finished reading this book called the compound effect. Yeah. Um, like a week before that that big spike and um, and it kind of talks like what you're saying like you know you do you do something for for years you know and it just seems like you're not getting anywhere and then it just takes that little spark and then you've got all this other stuff back that you know that you've done and so it's now all compounded because now the person finds that and they go through everything and you know and so I you know when it was just those two videos, I kind of wondered, I was like, well, maybe this is a little bit of the compound effect happening, and I'm sure there's a little bit there, but still, those numbers were Yeah. yeah. But, but you had that, you were ready because you laid that foundation. You know, you had, it's, it's like my channel, I don't get a lot of money, but I mean, you know, whatever, YouTube revenue, whatever they call it, but it's what I do make off of YouTube is not because I have one video that people watch, it's because I've got like 450 videos total and all of those videos, a couple cents here on each one of those videos adds up a little bit. So, yeah. but if, well, if, if ever one of those did like take off, I mean, if, if say you hear these stories about somebody who puts up, a, like I was just talking to a friend of mine whose ex-wife put up some kind of video, I forgot what it was, but it went nuts, it, millions of views. And she, that was the only video she had. And so she was in the position where, what do I do? You know, I, I, she didn't have that foundation built. Yeah. Well, okay. So you brought up money. Um, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I probably shouldn't have brought that. I mean, that's, I'm not saying that that's super important. I'm just trying no. to. No, because here's, here's what it is. Okay. So, so um, previous to this, it, it would take me eight months. Google doesn't pay you until you have a hundred dollars yeah. minimum. And um, and if you look at the analytics, all they do is estimate what you're getting. So yes, they do owe me money, but it is not even even with that huge spike, it's you can't live off it. It's not. Oh, yeah. even, you it's can't not, live off it, but you know it's like everything it's else. It's it's a little extra passive income, and if you got enough of those sources, it might sure, add up. Sure, but it's it's you know I think people. People seem to think. Um, I, I think people think there's more money in YouTube than there is. Yeah. No, I don't think that. But I, but it, it is something to help, like because you are basically doing these videos for the love of it or free of charge and everything. So a little extra, you know, just something like a little bit for your time to actually 
do these videos. It's something. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, a, it's a bag of groceries. And, yeah. and so from, from those couple videos that, you know, got me up more than where I was, I, I still have not gotten paid and they're still sitting there in, in the es estimated revenue. Really? Yep. So I, you know, I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, so it's, I don't know. Hmm. I, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, like what I was getting at too is just like, um, I don't know. I, it just made me think of like the fact that I've had a lot of, a, a couple of friends get pretty successful as like illustrators, like way more than me. I know you have too, Kevin. I know you got like buddies who work for like image and stuff, you know? And, um, yeah, that it's like successful, but some of them are, it doesn't always. Yeah. But there's, but the, like, you know, it's like, um, a common thing I hear from those friends is they're always weirded out when people are like, dude, you're so lucky that, yeah, you no, know, I work with that your graphic novels done or whatever, or your, you know, this thing just presented itself and it is kind of a magic wand idea. I think that some people have like, like, you know, like, the success didn't come with work and stuff. And it's like, I think it is good to know. It's like, like a lot of my friends who are way more successful than I am, like are still like working harder than most people I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So well, it's like, like I can, you know. I can speak to that about bands. Cause I, I was in, you know, a lot of bands that put out a lot of records and this and that, you know, my past life is a cooler dude. And, oh, um, yeah. and, like go on tour and people be like, Oh, you're on this label. You're so lucky. And you know, and just go, thanks. But really we worked, we yeah. were workhorses to get there. And, and when somebody was there to say, you know, if you want to put a record out, we were ready. And so it's kind of like Scott was saying and stuff like that. It's like you create your own luck and then there's the compound effect with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. and that's, that's also why people, you know, some band comes out, is, is huge and then the, you know the next thing since sliced beetles and um, they're like you know oh this overnight you guys are an overnight success and then they're like well no we've been a band for about 12 or 15 years we've been doing this for a long time <laughs> you know? yeah um, but I think it's because people are addicted I mean we'd all like to think there's overnight successes all the time I mean I, I would like that I would like if like when I had gotten out of hypothetically at the time I would have liked if I had gotten out of college and just been like, boom, like, hey, I'm a billionaire from New York. Here's a bunch of money. Make comics, you know? Yeah. But, like, um, and that might happen for some people. But I think that, you know, some of it's spun for, like, press because it's, like, you know, the local guy does good story, runs really well. The, the, you yeah, everybody likes the story. It's, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the guy who came out of nowhere and won the race, like, you know, like that's like a great story, but it's not, you know, I, I guess I'm just, that just made me think of that because I think um, when you're a creator of anything, like, like to me, I look at, at Kevin and it's like, we're talking about this video that kind of blew up. And I, like, for me, it's one of those things of like, you've just been working, you work really hard on your YouTube channel. So it's like, if you start, blowing up like good like you're doing the work you know like so it's it's one of the same you know scott you're working really hard if you blow up good you know um and it wouldn't be too mystical because it's like you are kind of creating that thread so that when that you know potentially happens or whatever but uh but anyhow i, I don't know it just made me think of that yeah i mean i'm curious because you know we are just like in the first month of this, and I am seeing the numbers significantly drop. So, but you know, I'm still going to do what I'm doing. You yeah. Know, and, hey, if you need any of my three subscribers, <laughs> go subscribe to Kevin Cross. <laughs> well, I think I think it's it's natural to kind of. I mean, it's not going to go down. It may not keep skyrocketing, but you're way further along than you were, and I think it's going to. I think it's going to keep up. And then, like I said, the more videos you have now, but look now when you put out a video, it's gonna. It may not get as much views as that one, but it's getting a lot more than what you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, the the baseline seems to be higher, um, but you know, it's who knows. Yeah, the internet is really fickle and weird. Cause like, like I, uh, um, 
I've had two or three experiences of going like really viral. And this was like almost 10 years ago now. And each time it happened a lot like what you're describing, where it's just like I put the thing in the places that I was always putting the images and then some like blog or something got a hold of it. And the next thing you know, it's like I searched my name and for like three weeks, it's like a million view, you know, results or whatever. And you, you, I think there's a temptation to like try to like, I don't know. I, th I think there's a lot of people who like will try to quantify it and make maybe, maybe they aren't being too honest about it. I don't know. <laughs> like, um, and I think there are steps you can take and stuff, but, I, but it's like, I always found it weird that there's like companies that have this perception. They can just hire somebody to make them a viral video or hire them to make them viral art. Um, cause it's like, I don't, I don't know if there's like really a set magic formula to like what's going to take off, you know? Uh, I'll like, tell you my YouTube channel, pre beard and post beard. Two different. <laughs> I will say the Illuminati helped a lot too. all the secret societies. Yeah. Um, they've been helpful. Yeah. I mean, Corey just broke it down, you know, like there's no way to game the system. <laughs> yeah. There's good work and content and, no, I think yeah. There's things you can do to up your chances, but in the end, it's kind of up to YouTube. So, and I'm not even saying I think I have good content. Really, I just like do what I want to do. <laughs> and well, and that's part of it. That's part of it because you're being real, and people can see that. You know. Yeah, I I would say that's like for me. I think maybe that's not because like, I, it's weird because I do st see stuff that's completely inauthentic that blows up and uh, like I hear music all the time that like I it's just super inauthentic sounding to me but like people love it and it you know does well but in my ideal world <laughs> like in my head I think that authenticity goes cuts through kind of barriers and stuff and when I thought about it also the thing about authenticity is like if you say like made a really fake like, like Kevin, if you were making like unwrapping toys videos or something, you know, and, and you're not into unwrapping toys, but you saw somebody else on YouTube unwrap toys. So you're like, okay, I'm going to be a YouTube star. I'm going to unwrap toys. And if that actually worked, you'd be stuck like unwrapping toys. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like you know, I'd rather be stuck kind of doing something I dig. So I think it's cool that some peaking is happening with like what you're doing because it's something you're into. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It seems like the ideal situation, right? Yeah, when you watch some of these if you do watch some of the kind of YouTube specialists and, and stuff and guys that talk about how to grow your YouTube channel, I mean sometimes I'll watch like a live stream and people will be asking questions like, what kind of videos can I make to to become famous on YouTube or to get a lot of followers. And it's like, you're asking the wrong question. I mean, you've got to, you've got to do it because you love it. I mean, or you want to, or because you have a passion for it. If you're just trying to do whatever you want, just because you think, you know, you're going to make money at YouTube. I think you're in for a rude awakening. Um, yeah, there, there's kind of something I want to, well, I don't know if I have anything really smart to say about this, but, um, there's something about watching a lot of those YouTube guru videos about YouTube. What a bunch of brilliant hucksters. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, let's start a YouTube video. Hmm. Well, that wow, seems to be good on YouTube. Yeah. And, exa and it's, it's that it's not just YouTube. It's anything. I mean, the people that are making tons of money are doing it as, educators how to do this thing that I was able to do and the reason why you're probably so successful in it is a whole different reason than what you can actually share with somebody or teach them and I'm not I mean I, I definitely understand where you're coming through from I still think there's a lot of knowledge to take away from what they're saying but you have to realize that they're in this because this is a business and this is a way for them to make money you know no I know it's, it's really so, like yeah it, it's like hey I, I have one YouTube channel and it's about how to get good at YouTube. Right. It, because that's so searchable. It's like, 
advertiser friendly and that you know and and like there's there's one guy I was watching um, and he had like a thousand subscribers or something and I'm like how well do you know YouTube I mean very yeah to be fair he could have like had a YouTube channel stopped it started a new one or whatever but he was regurgitating the things I've I've heard from like the people who actually do have huge YouTube businesses and you know I'm more apt to listen to them but but I, I always see this how to get viral how to be viral how to do this yeah. on YouTube, yeah. these, um, you know and, and I'm like oh this is your only channel though I don't I don't, I don't trust you <laughs> yeah. well there is there is the thing and I hear this too is like if, if, if you do have a passion for that and you do have some knowledge about how to do that or whatever, there's always somebody below you that can get something out of it. You know, yeah. whether at what stage you are in art. I mean, in some ways it can be kind of dangerous if you're dispersing advice on art and you might not be that good. <laughs> but there's a lot of people out there like that that you see, like sometimes younger people, they're just starting off. And there are people that are younger that are just blowing it out of the water, like Holly Brown's one of them. But um, but there are some people that, you know, you look at the artwork and it's like, there's some stuff you gotta work on, but they're teaching people and, but there's people just starting off that are younger than them even, and yeah, I mean, evidently they can get something out of it. You know? I know I know what you're saying, and you're, you're being more positive than me. There, I just I just think that there's a lot of hucksterism in that, in that sphere. Yeah. Well, you get if you get to a point where you can recognize, you know, what to, you know, what to take out of their videos and what to, you know, leave alone. I mean, take everything with a grain of salt. But I think I still think there's a lot of, you know, good that can come out of those. You know, I've learned. I can say personally, I've learned a lot. It's just as far as getting my channel, you know, and obviously it's this isn't. You know, it's not YouTube isn't a business for me. It's just right now, it's just me having fun. But I've still learned a lot as far as how to format my channel and all these little things to do that hopefully, you know, if I keep at it, hopefully it will help out. So, I mean, I think it's better than not doing any of that stuff at all. So, so like, yeah, I just think there, that there's so many inroads that it's, you know, it's hard to listen to one person. I take. think the way to view it is the way you view hopefully any instructor right I mean like um, there's a lot of guys who teach guitar you know there's a lot of guitar teachers and some of them weren't in big bands and they're excellent guitarists and you can learn a shit ton from them and uh, and then some of them are just guys who like are just teaching guitar and aren't really that good and maybe are kind of pulling the wool over your eyes you know it's like there's there's that element in any form of like teaching so you know to me like um i i'm i always get skeptical if somebody calls himself an expert you know um but i also like you know i i don't know you know like like kevin was saying like there's always the possibility like the guy with a thousand subscribers like has you know expert knowledge and maybe he had like a million follower yeah. channel or something who knows yeah. I mean the point know, being but... it doesn't hurt to like approach that kind of thing with a little bit of skepticism because if like their five steps to go viral works wouldn't they have gone viral <laughs> like you know yeah well, well, there's also like um, you know going to the band shit again like playing in bands everyone said well you got to do this this and this and and yeah uh, you know I, I'm, I'm living proof that you know a b and c sometimes it worked better for us to go you know f d b a <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like go go like some weird way in um when i wanted to do kids books you know remember that time when i oh yeah you know, and i was like well i'm gonna get a kids book agent and blah 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 um you know a lot of people were were giving me friendly advice, you know, about working kids' books and what you need to do and in the process and how long it's gonna take and you have to, you know, develop all this stuff. And and I was like, um, listen to what they're saying. And then somehow I got in through a different door. Yeah. A completely different door. You know? And and that's just how it always has been. So when I listen to people say how they got in or, you know, to whatever you're trying to do, you know. Um 
I, I guess what I'm saying is get somewhere successful. It doesn't have to be YouTube, but, but using the YouTube gurus as, as examples, sometimes I listen to them say, here's how you, here's how you get in. And then I go, okay, you just told me which door is closed. Yeah. That's what you just did. You know? <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that makes like perfect so many sense. Times, like, like put three videos out a week. Yeah, that's great. But you know, um, sometimes when I get too busy and skip a week, it's better than when I did a video a day, you know, you know, whatever. So who knows, you know, it's just, it's who knows. And then yeah. Corey, Corey, I like what he says here in the um, chat. Um, SEO has always, always been chock full of gurus there to take the money of the impatient. Yeah. I also like what he said before. If you want to, if you want to be successful on YouTube, put red circles on your thumbnails. Oh, and arrows. Or little That's arrows. Yeah. <laughs> Which you didn't notice about this. <laughs> I should do that just for as yeah. a joke. <laughs> the ten things you didn't know about this circle and arrow. Yeah. So, so I mean, like, yeah, I, I would say the same thing too because, like, I my whole experience as a professional artist has been a mix of like a lot of really well, like, well given advice that you know was well meant, like, actually worked. And yeah. then a lot of it, like, was just kind of wedging my own little way in yeah. so that I could get clients. And even where I'm at now, like, if somebody were to say, like, how do you become an art director? I don't think I could be like, okay, first you got to, like, get out, work in the education industry. From that, like, apply for some weird grant, you know, like, from that, like, work for these weird little clients like here and there and build up this gradual thing and you follow that step that worked for me. So it's going to work for you. Like that wouldn't work. Yeah. yeah so I, I literally can't tell somebody how they can become an art director other than just like get a lot of work and just keep working and then apply for art director positions. And eventually you might get one, you know, like it, it's, it's not like there's not a set in stone roadmap, you know, and there's yeah. so many people who don't get gigs that like deserve gigs more than I do, you know, and like they followed all the right stuff and it just doesn't, you know, open. So it's like, I don't like, I, I, I really am always skeptical of a guru unless it's like, it's weird, but there's like well-worn territory. That's like very good advice, you know, but like oddly enough, a lot of that stuff's like very standard, you know, like don't be a dick to people. That's a pretty, before, before that's a pretty we get standard further way to along, succeed. Yeah. I just want to say we do do this art cast where we dispense a lot of advice. So some people might say that we're sort of gurus in a way. So <laughs> not that we're claiming to be, but but I mean but we do we do give advice about the business of art. I mean that's kind of what this channel is all about. So I mean this show. So I don't so, know. Yeah, but don't listen to us. We don't know what we're talking about. No, you do. Here's how here's how I think well, here's how I like to play that. Um, I don't say, here's how you do, you know, here, here's how you do thing one. Um, what I do is I, I just frame it. This is how I do it. Yeah. Right. This how, the way I do it. And, I, and no matter what, even if I say this is the way I do it, there's 50 other ways to get to this point. But, and people, you know, you talk to 50 artists, you're going to get 50 answers. Um, it, inevitably, there will be somebody in the comments that goes, you're a dick. That's not how you do it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, I want to ask you about that. Since you do have a lot, you've started getting these followers. Are you getting a lot more like negative stuff or do you pay attention to that or whatever? Um, is that you, okay. So <laughs> this is funny. Um, there, there would be an occasional like thumbs down, you know, and, and there might be, maybe an occasional kind of annoying comment or something like that. But for the most part, it was very, very positive. And, and the commenters were people I knew, um, you know, and that's it. I don't mean just in person, you know, like I know you guys in, in real life and stuff like that, it, you know, but people I know through the internet for years or whatever. And, and um, people I talk to through this kind of stuff. And, um, and then all of a sudden I got way more thumbs downs than I've ever gotten. And then I started getting, Comments like early, first, subbed. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, I used to, I got I, every once in a while I get like a first on my channel. I get, I get like a, you know a total of what 
60 views and somebody's putting first, like that's a real accomplishment. <laughs> um, but, but so I started getting those with the thumbs downs. And then I, you know, there was some kind of, there was some, some that, that were insulting kind of comments, but you could tell the way they're written. The person was trying to be clever and like, Hey, like me. Cause I'm clever and funny. Um, and, and I was like, what, whatever. Um, <laughs> there's one that was like, um, I didn't know Russell Crowe was an artist or, um, one that said, you look like the dad from some movie that I've never heard of or seen. <laughs> Um, oh, and there was a couple that were that, so I'm, maybe I do look like that guy. Um, you know, things like that, things that had nothing to do, like I'm getting comments that have nothing to do with right. with, with anything, you know, that's in the video. Or, it, you know, talking about, you know, talking about appearances or, um, you know, hey, I live in Portland. Cool. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> um, you know, things like, things that just, like that, and then instead of being like all like like bummed, like oh I got these thumbs downs, and people say they look like this and blah, 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 um, which I don't, so it's weird. But um, wait, there and I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, so, but anyway, so instead of being like like oh where's all my like positive people, who are there in droves, you know, still, so so that's great, and awesome. But I just took it as positive. I was like, "Hey, I'm getting the annoying YouTube comments that people talk about." Finally, yeah, yeah that's I'm, when you know you've you've got big. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> maybe I'm actually a part of this thing now. <laughs> no. People hate this video. I don't care. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's funny because you get. I, I'm at the point. I mean, I mean, you can't do this obviously now, but I mean, I'm at the point where I respond to all my comments. Oh, and, but every, every once in a while, somebody will leave just a comment that I have no idea how to respond to this because it's like, it doesn't make sense or like, like, hey, I don't know what to say here because, yeah, I just yeah. get weird comments every now and then. Yeah, I just saw one. Um, I haven't done any comments on this latest video yet. And it takes a long time because so far I've kept up all month with my comments um, except for this past, past few days. So I've got a lot. Um, and I'm going to try to keep it up for as long as possible. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I got some, some one that was like, you know, um, faux shizzle two B three nine six, um, <laughs> word up 69 dope art. So I'm like, and so what I should do is I should just write beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Cause there's a lot of that text speak and they throw a lot of emojis in there that, and it's like. Uh, yeah, I'm lost. I'm old. <laughs> Evan, I love your comments. Keep them coming. Yeah. Just say thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and sometimes, sometimes like, like, there was one, I don't remember what it was, because it was, like, really poorly spelled. Like, it, it, it almost, it looked like maybe English was this person's language or something, maybe. Because mm -hmm. um, it was just, like, I was, like, you just made, you just picked words. You just picked words and you wrote them down. I don't know what you're doing. And you know, just write. I'll just like pick a word. You know, maybe I'll, you know, yeah, I try, try say something, or or I'll just be like, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. Because I've had some like that too, and I'd like I maybe you might know what you're talking about, so I'd like try to respond, but yeah, it's yeah, which yeah, yeah and usually it is is kind of not their first language, and you can't fault anyone for that unless it's just somebody who's just an idiot. You can't tell if they're an idiot or if they just speak a different language. So, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it is kind of funny sometimes to get that, like, you're a total asshole. I hate you. And you're like, oh, all right. <laughs> oh. I don't know. It's, it just it, it it fills my heart with blood to think that I'm actually part of something now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really yeah. happy joke. Well, the, the weird thing is, especially if you are responding to all your emails or your, your messages, and then you get people that's like, this guy, that, like they're not speaking directly to you. Because I've had that too. I'm like, I'm right here. I'm listening. I'm watching. I respond. Yeah. So just, yeah. you know, if you want to talk, talk to me. I'll answer you. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, right, I'm in the room. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, and there's there's been a couple comments that I couldn't tell if they were like trying to be trolls or not, and I just thought like yeah. well, these aren't like like super duper mean or anything, and then I I try to write write something, you know, 
silly back, and then and they're like, right on, man, great art, and little, you know, something like, <laughs> or something like that. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. That's awesome. So, like, I I think I think you you want to root for more hate on your YouTube channel. So, well, in a way, in a way, because um, you know the. I think I've talked to you about this before, and yeah. I've said it on YouTube even before. Is um, I've probably said this a thousand times because I know I've said it a thousand times. Uh, you know, when the magazines would come out, when our records would come out, you know, I'm talking like Maximum Rock and Roll, you know, that kind of stuff, like punk magazines and shit. And um, you know, we'd like look at the comments, and sometimes you get a great count, like like review of your record, and sometimes you get a real bad one, I and mean, sometimes. And at first, when you're new in that kind of thing, the bad ones hurt. Oh yeah, you might, you might have 50 good ones, and then one bad one, and that's all you can think about. Yeah. But then you, but then you, you do it for a while, and you, you like, what? I don't care. I'm still going to do what I want to do. You know, yeah. that's that's kind of where I'm at with everything now that I do. Is like, I don't. I'm just going to do. I'm just going to do what I want to. But but so, it's like if you get that like a con. Uh, it looks like you're going to you're trying to set up a joke, Josh. <laughs> Um, and so, um, no, it just reminded me of something. I'll tell you after. <laughs> I was laughing at Jim Luhan's comment. <laughs> Go ahead. And so, so then, like, but the ones after you kind of like, you know, you get over that, and you kind of you're like, okay, you know, some people hate this. That's a good. That's actually a good response because you know, on you know, on YouTube, if you want more people to see your videos, those actually count as a positive. For, yep as engagement. So yeah, go, go right ahead trolls. I don't care. You know what I mean? Um, but, but what you don't want, the ones that, that now hurt and hurt like in bands are the ones where they're like, meh. Yeah. Like, you want people to like dig it or hate it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think that goes outside of just YouTube. Like, so what this reminded me of is, um, I illustrated this book called barbarians, a uh, uh handbook for aspiring savages yep and um some guy like who's like really serious about barbarians like super serious about barbarians and is also a republican apparently got really offended because we took a lot of jabs on like it's a very left-leaning humor book it's it's funny as hell like the writer who did it did a good job that's why i took the gig you know and um but like he Put, he was a reviewer and then he like posted his reviews like everywhere online is the weirdest thing but what was funny was like this is the point where like at first when I first started to read his review I was like man we're just getting slaughtered this sucks like the books are not selling that well until he got really personal in the review like started making personal comments about people he doesn't even know and 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 like that's where I was like oh okay this guy's just got issues <laughs> like and i've had that happen twice like that happened with um numb too like it was sent out for review and there was this one guy who's like this artist needs to get a life and just went off on the artist like myself like yeah, not the art yeah i've gotten that stuff plenty <laughs> and it was nuts where you're just like reading it like really like you know me <laughs> like yeah. and um and it is it is funny because it does take that like the first few you read like that, it, it's like really offensive. And then after a while, it's like, well, hey, you know, it's a review and it is online. So it'll up the search for it, you know? Yeah. And then, but, you know, it, for some people like Jim Lujan, um, the, the internet is for porn. And then um, also to hide behind a screen somewhere and spew hate to make themselves feel good about them not doing something. So, you know. There, there's, you just said, you know, I don't know. It, it's just the more engagement, the better, and you know, just doing what you want, and not, not really worrying too much. You know, it's it's like exciting to see a big yeah. spike like that, but it, you know, it's not. It's still not a living, and yeah. so I'm still going to continue. You, you know, and I, I'm watching it dip, and instead of like beating myself up, you know, because. You know, I, I have to admit, at a certain point, I was like, "Is this my new baseline? Is way up here?" And to see it go down, I have to admit, there was a thing. You know, kind of hit me. I was like a little disappointed, like, "Oh," and then I was like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait!" But look where you're at now. 
Yeah. And, and you're still doing what you want. And, you know, just, just continue that. And then I don't know if we're wrapping this up because it's getting kind of late, but I was going to tell you the definitive secret so everybody right now could actually kind of get, get you know, 100,000 views. I have my pencil up. All right, go ahead. Okay, you ready? Okay, so the first thing that I started to do is... There you have it, folks. That's the secret. And uh, that'll do it for this Artcasters. <laughs> oh, I do want Kevin back on so he can log out. Oh, well. Anyhow, we'll check out Kevin Cross's work. Uh, look up Kevin Cross on YouTube. He's awesome. Check out Monkey Mod. And uh, Kevin will be back at some point in the near future. I don't know when I'll see Kevin again. I don't. You're ruining the joke. Oh, oh no. <laughs> So anyhow, um, that'll do it, and we will see you guys next week. Uh, Scott, you want to explain how the channel works? Yeah, so the Artcasters rotates between Josh's channel and my channel, and we usually have a third guest, but that's irrelevant as far as which channel it's on. But anyway, so if you want to know which, whose channel we're going to be on and when, like for instance, we've, we've typically done it on Wednesdays. That may change. I don't know, but sometimes we have to do it on Thursdays. So if you want to know that information, sign up for our mailing list. We don't spam you or anything. There's a link in the description of this video. You can click on that, sign up to the mailing list, and we try to send out, if we can, 30 minutes ahead of time just to let you know that we're about to go live. And um, I've, been, I've been sending them out, like, like for instance, because we usually do Wednesday. If we don't do it on Wednesday, sometimes I send one out and say, no, our casters tonight. But we may just tell you when we are going to do it and tell you just in, instead of explaining, because I don't, we don't, we don't know exactly what the schedule is going to be. It may be Wednesday or Thursday going forward, but it's usually Wednesday or Thursday. So, um, just sign up for that uh, mailing list, and you'll know what it is. And yeah, it could. It could literally happen any day. You have yeah. to be on the list. Um, uh, and Scott, where can we find your stuff too? You can find me right here down here at CircWorks.com, CircWorks Art Labs on YouTube and uh, madsciencesupplycompany.com. All right, cool. Well, I'm about to get a visit by the YouTube Illuminati, so we got to go. All right, see you guys. Later.